the ball. Look out. He got it over here on the right side of Charlie Cook. Cook handles it. Fake, 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 fake. Still has it to the right. Shoots in the middle to David Storm. That's the guy they try and get the ball to. The leading scorer in the North American Soccer League, Steve David, six foot, only 155 pounds. In Trinidad, he is still rated as one of the top sprinters in track in the country. Whip it thin, but tall enough to be very effective in this great game of soccer. Steve David. Is he going to go? Is he not going to go? He's got the 20-year-old defender. And right to Steve David. He says, piece of cake, friends and neighbors. I make those in my sleep. And it's 3-2. The leading scorer in the North American Soccer League has just uh, scored another one. His 11th goal of the season for Steve David. He just pulled the trigger. All right, guys, I went to school at St. Benedict's College a lot of years ago. And we did play Asia. Do you want to know what the score was? No. Okay. You do? No, it was 21 nothing. But, but don't forget St. Benedict's was the best football team at that time. We win everything from junior team, senior grade, championship, we win it all. So we had all the great guys with Warren Archibald and Leroy Delian, and you guys wouldn't know that because you guys are like um, great, great grandchildren <laughs> at your age, right? But uh, again, everybody starts somewhere. So I know you guys are not great players yet, but somewhere between here, we might have a few of them. Who know, know who Pele is? Yes. You know Pele? Yes. Okay, good. When I was your age, I used to watch Pele play and, and listen to it on the radio because there wasn't much television at the time. And then guess what? I went to the North American Soccer League and played football, played on the same field against him and with him. On the, so I personally met the Pele. And I didn't think I was going to at your, your age, but I ended up doing that. So. The world is open up for us to do whatever we want to do. In, in, so don't feel, because now you're not that good, you can be that good. And guess what? When Pele came to the league in the North American Soccer League, I was the MVP of the league, and he was a runner-up MVP. <laughs> so you got to give me a round of applause for that, right? <laughs> yeah, and this is, right. So, so let me give you my story. My story was, I was born in Point Fortin, and I went to Point Fortin Easy School, and then one day a teacher said, I was this high, small, like small man here, I know he's gonna be a good footballer, I can tell. And then some teacher said, he has something in him. And I was very excited about that. So now I start to work on my craft a little harder. Then I get, I pass common entrance, went to St. Benedict's College, started to play for the junior team, and then at his size, I played for the senior grade team because I was that good, 13 years old around there, right? Not for the championship. I had to get to the 14, 15 before I can get on the championship team. But I knew education was the most important thing for me. So I, I of course, study hard but play hard as well. And it, when even time, go work hard, go, go work in your game, you can't wait for the coach to do that for you. You have to work on things special. So you have to have plan other things outside of your coach's session in football. You have to do things on your own to develop. After college, after college or high school, whatever you guys call it, um, I needed to do a little bit more. So I wanted, a, I wanted a degree. I wanted to go to a university. My parents didn't have the money to send me. They didn't even have the money to send me to sixth form. I had to get out of school and join the police service so I can earn some money, so I can get to go play, to go to a university. But because of my talent, because of the football talent I had, I got a professional contract to go play football outside the country. And, and how did I get that? I was playing for Trinidad against Haiti and Guatemala and Honduras and all the different things in the whole tournament we had. And 
scouts that came to the games and stuff. Three people offered me contracts to go out and play in the States. And guess what? I said, whoever is going to pay for my school, I'd sign. So Miami Toro says, I will pay for your schooling and also pay for, you know, give me money as a uh, professional footballer. So I did that. I went to Miami, got into school, make sure while I was playing professional football, I got my degree. So I did all that, and then I continue beyond that. So forget the beyond that. In the North American Soccer League as a player, my first year I was rookie of the year. Tony Douglas, one of several players from Trinidad playing on uh, both of these squads today. In fact, Miami has three starters who come from Trinidad, including their dynamic duo, Steve David and Warren Archibald. Archibald was the most valuable player in the North American Soccer League last year. David was well up in the balloting for Rookie of the Year this year. He's done an outstanding job. And you guys know what Rookie of the Year is? What is Rookie of the Year? The best, well, for the first year. First year people, what do you call that? You don't call it Rookie here, you call it something else, whatever. But the first year as a professional, I won Rookie of the Year. Scored the most goals. In 20 games, I had like 14 goals. And then the next year is when Pele came in. And that, this is 1975. That's how long. And then Pele came into the league. And, and of course, Pele came in making millions of dollars, and he was the best player in the world. And uh, that's the year I won the most valuable player. Pele was a runner-up to that. I had 23 goals in 21 games. And then the next year after that, they brought in another German guy called Beckenbauer. I don't know who ever heard of Beckenbauer, but he was the captain of the German World Cup team. And then after they won the World Cup, he came to the United States and played with the New York Cosmos. And, of course... That year, I scored 27 goals in 23 games, but got run-up MVP because they give it to Beckenbauer, who was big name, but I, I personally knew I should have won it, but they gave it to him anyway, but that's okay. So I have played with the George Bass, the, all the great players in the world from this little country, which started just like you. So the sky is the limits for you. So all you have to do is to concentrate on the things you want to do and the things you want to achieve. You gotta set priorities. If, if you wanna be a doctor, you set priorities now to be that. So you have to do all the things that it's gonna to take to get there. If you wanna be a professional football player, you set the priorities, you know you gotta go work a couple couple times a day on your skills and, and all the different things. So all it is is setting priorities and working towards what you want. Write it down. Things that you want to write it down and write the things that you have to do to get there. And then every day you make sure you go over it and you make sure you do the things that you say you're going to do to get there. And you can get there. There's nobody can stop you from getting there. So the next time I hear about Asia, no, I am a fan. No, I'm one of you because I, I am talking to you now and I'm part of you now. I'm part of this body. So the next time I hear about Asia in the senior grade is that they're going to be in the premier division. So next year you guys are going to play senior grade, right? So we're going to make sure you get to the premier division and the junior team and all of that and you guys are going to move up. I'm going to leave a couple of minutes for any questions because you guys might have a lot of questions for me, right? Um, so let me open up any questions and anything you want to ask about football, about life, about anything. You do. The, 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 the days you have, there's some days you go and the ball doesn't bounce for you. Everything you do is, is, is not, you, you know, you're not doing good, as good as you want to. But it, you can't do that every day. It's football, and it happens. So you don't go down on yourself. You just work harder. And sometimes, sometimes you need that to make sure you work harder. So 
don't be expect nobody else to give you that motivation but yourself. Okay, attitude. Attitude determines your altitude. Attitude is how high you determine how high you go. I'm gonna give you guys some homework. Do the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F. Write one for A, two for B, all the way down to the 26th letter, right? And then spell out the word attitude and take the number under it and add it all up. And then guess what you're gonna end up with? 100, like 100%. And that is what's gonna determine you, whatever you do, you gotta have the right attitude for it. So always, you can have a little chip on your shoulder when you get good, and I did that. I played with that chip on my shoulder because after I got good and I had game, you know, Pele, like the, and a reporter said to me, how do, you feel play, how do you feel playing with Pele? And I, what do you think I said to him? I said to him, go ask Pele how he feel playing with me. Right? Because I had attitude. I had attitude because I had game. I said, I'm the MVP, right? So... So, I mean, you have to keep working, at, like I said, at your craft, and, and nothing, nothing is impossible. And as long as you have the time, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. Don't think. There's no barriers. Anytime something comes in our way, an obstacle, it's just a challenge for us to get better. So we work it out, and then we try, and we get better. CTN The Voice, your family-friendly station. You're now changing your question. What I would say, Steve, I, is this. Well, but I, my first question was, and roll back that tape. I made my debut for Crystal Palace against Tottenham Hotspur. My responsibility was to get the ball and make things happen offensively. Only by not tell me now. <laughs> In all the time we've played together, I've always been the decoy. Welcome to Field of Dreams on ACTN. My name is Steve David and I'm your host. Hey, all right, boy. All right, Bob. Um, how did vigilantes run you out of San Francisco? I could take the cow and calf and sell them in independence. The government drew a new line and we're on the wrong side, so we have to go. I can't stand up. You can't stand up, little buddy. You really can't stand up? You're standing on my hand. Bed sheet wearing sand crawling. Let me get him. Got me as a friend, you don't really need an enemy. <laughs> Thank you. George! What about my coat? Oh, it's very nice. <laughs> hey, 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 I can use that one. <laughs> Welcome back to Your Health, Your Choice. So he did some of the first illustrations, the wow. actual drawings. As you know, I'm a community diabetologist. Uh, diabetes is my specialty. What, what needs to be done? How you can take responsibility for your health care? Yes. The gold standard is still the camera. everyone to another edition of Football 101. Half season and things are looking gloomy for Madrid. Who is a Chelsea fan? <laughs> oh. I only know one side of Manchester and it's red. <laughs> I don't know what any blue side. Yes, I'm an Arsenal fan. Um, That's very unfortunate. I love you, Messi. Mike, want to say thanks for... No! What are you going We bring the field directly to your home. ACTM, The Voice. Your family friendly station. Okay, what other question you have? Small man, you the top scorer with no goals? <laughs> but, 
But you had to start scoring some goals. I heard the, the, your, your best scorer has two goals. That's not enough. We got to do better than that. So it's okay for now. Every time you play, as a goal scorer, every time you play, you should want to score because that's what wins games. Yeah? Okay, what other question you have? In my life? It had to be my mom because I, re I remember days when my mom didn't have money to send me to school and she had to go borrow from my aunt. To, and, and, and then I, it came to the point, I said, let me stop, that's after my exam, and let me go out and get some work and don't stress them out. And like I said earlier, and that was my motivation to get my education so I had to do it somewhere. So I do it through football. So I would say my mom, but as players, as a player, there was one player in this country called, named Bobby Sukram. He was my mentor, kind of the guy who I looked up to as, a foot, as, as the best footballer I see in this country. And then, of course, the big names outside Pele, George Best, Keen Aglia, and all the, and, all these guys are motivational players for me to get better. You, you know, you set a standard to go, and when you get there, you set another standard. You know, don't say, I want to be the best player in the world, and you have to do it in steps. I want to be best player in Trinidad. I want to be the best player, so on. And you do it in steps. I want to be the best junior team player. I want to be the senior great player. I want to be the best championship player, and so on. <laughs> Do you have any pre-match rituals? Pre-match or lots. You know, and, and again, when you do something and it, and it works for you, you continue to do it. You know, you put on your left shoe before your right. Yeah, and you put your, and that kind of stuff. A lot, you're going to have a lot of those. And, uh, but they come. Don't make that drive you, though. Don't make that be the thing that makes you. If, it, if you didn't do it, don't worry about it. Oh, do you know if you had any moves, like butterflies and stuff during the early games, I used to deal with that. No, that's good. You must have butterflies. I used to run track, track there as well, track and field. And before the races, like from, but from the time the starter says, get to your mark, everything goes, the butterfly goes. But before, you can feel it. Before a big game, as the bigger the game is, the more the butterflies in your stomach. So you feel it, that's good then that means you, you're thinking about your game and you're gearing up for your game. But as soon as the whistle blows, the butterfly goes, you start playing and you start getting it. So don't worry about butterflies. That's good for you because that means you are into your game and you are thinking about your game and you are wondering about it. So oh, the night before, you can't sleep because you have a game coming up. That's how you feel. And then, guess what? Well, after you get good, the night before, you can sleep and the people who you come up against, they can't sleep because they know you, they come up against you. That's how you have to make it happen. Yeah? Okay. What, what, what was your biggest achievement and your biggest as a player? As a player? Well, biggest achievement, of course, is being the most valuable player in the North American Soccer League. You know, you get a car for that. And you get a lot of money for that. And also... In Trinidad, being uh, on the Hall of Fame, Football Hall of Fame, that's a big achievement as well. Dunk fall, dunk fall is, I can't think about much dunk fall because once you have, you're gonna fall. But the key is to get up, dust yourself off and keep going. So I don't have any dunk fall that I remember that kept me, kept me, sitting and, and not going forward. You have to get up, dust it off. If you want to cry, you cry, and then you go. And anytime there's a, a dunk fall, that is an obstacle for you to do better and, and improve. And, and you have to work it out, have find solutions to work that out and make you better. Anybody else? Who, the, the top goal scorer who has two goals, who is he? Stand up. No, no. Our national team does not have goal scorers. 
So you should now set a goal to be on our national team as a goal scorer. I was the top goal scorer in the national team. World Cup goals for this national team I had, I had 16 World Cup goals in 12 World Cup games. And I had the record. And then Stern John, who played for the strike squad, broke that record, but he broke that record playing 40 something games to get 16. So, so you, all you have, to, but the record is broken. It doesn't matter how much. So all you have to do is to work on your craft and set a goal now, now to be the next top goal scorer in Trinidad and Tobago football. Or the colleges league, you can start off with the colleges league and then work yourself out. Yeah? I like goal scorers because that's, what I, that's how I made a living. And goal scorers make a lot of money when you turn pro. Don't don't live to be a professional because I never thought I would ever be a professional. I never wanted to be a professional. I wanted to make a lot of money and to get a good job and all of that and get an education. But it happened that that is a track I had to take. But don't put that as your goal. If it happens, it happens. And if it don't happen, you should be able to. All right? I know you speak about individual aspects, but how would you advise a team to behave and approach these big games and how to better communicate and the attitude towards the game. How would you advise a team to, you know? Well, you, you, you listen to your coach. Your coach has it. Your coach knows. He can see. He knows what, what, what he needs to get done. You just have to bring your game. Come with your best game to make the coach proud of you. Start with that. Make sure when you go out in the field, you give it all. You make your coach proud. When you walk off the field, whether you play good or bad, you could pick his head up and look at everybody in the eye because you had left everything on the field. You have given it all you had. That's, that's what you have to do. And every time you play, give it all you have like it's your last game because it might be your last game. Who knows? You think I ever, it, I never dreamed about being this age. All of a sudden, I woke up, hey, Steve, you got old. It, it happens. So you have to give it every single day. You give it, the, put your best foot forward for your life. Be the best you can be every single day. Whether it's school, football, whatever, track and field, whatever. Be the best you can be. And then you have no regrets. Like now I can sit back. No regrets about my whole career because I felt like I did everything I had to do. And I gave it my all. So now looking back, this is what they never told me. This is what nobody ever told me. And I'm going to tell you. When you get to be my age and you sit back and you look back at your whole career as a footballer or whatever, you enjoy it ten times more. Because when I sit back now and I see football going on and I'm thinking about my day, it's so much fun. It's like, whoa. You don't know what to say. I mean, it's just so much fun to the, the pleasure. And when people said to me, hey, Steve, thanks for the memories. That makes me feel so good. I feel like I could have I could given them more, but I give them everything I have. But so those days will come. So you can be proud of them. Right. And they um, probably in your long football life, probably probably play with countless sides, countless people. I mean, it's a different thing. Like when you're playing with like every side, right? Or 10, as a case may be. But can, I want you to really let like, know from a professional point of view if one man attitude, but a positive or negative, they bring or make the side. If one man? Attitude, or oh. When somebody has bad attitude, you try to help them and pick them up. When somebody make a mistake, you try to help them and pick them up. I'm glad you say that because when I played in Trinidad and you're not having a good game, everybody's on your, on your case, right? And then when I went into a pro and I'm having a bad game, nobody's on my case because they know you can do better. But when you're playing good, like here when you're playing good, nobody sees nothing because you're playing good. When you're a professional and you're playing good, you're hearing everybody encouraging you. Come on, Steve, good ball. Yeah, well, 
good goal, good pass. So it's the opposite, because that is our culture. Our culture is to get on people when they're dumb. And, and, and the professional life, they don't get on you when you're down. They try to pick you up and, and encourage you. So you should try to pick up the player who's not doing well. Well, come on, Johnny, you could do better. It's OK, and that kind of stuff. And pick up your players, because you will have days that you need that. And somebody would say to you, don't worry about it. Next time, and you would, you would enjoy that. So that's, that's the attitude you have to have. Yeah? OK. All right, I am so glad I get an opportunity to talk to you guys. And I hope you guys take this and, and think about it and do the things that would get you where you want to be. Make sure you set priorities, make sure you set goals, and all of that to get there. Like I said to you guys, do the alphabet, put a number from A1 to Z26, put the numbers, write down the word attitude, count up the, the numbers, the score, and see, it comes to 100. Probably the only word in the alphabet that might come to 100. So be that, and, and, and follow, follow your dream. I have a show called Feel of Dreams, Monday Night and Axe. It's, again, that is what it is, it's about. Follow your dreams. You guys have dreams to be the best player in the world, then follow that and do what you have to do.